How to install Jenkins on Alma Linux 8. So here's today's starting point. I have a fresh installation of Alma Linux 8. The only thing I've done to it is I've run a DNF update to get it fully patched and ready to run. Currently I'm logged in as root. So let's go ahead and just prove out. We'll say DNF update and everything's resolved, nothing else to do. Down in the description of this video is a link to a gist that has all of the commands and references that we're going to be looking at in this video. So the first thing that we want to do is go ahead and get Java installed. We'll just make sure that Java isn't installed. We'll just say Java-version and no Java found. So we're going to install the Adoptium version of Java, specifically Java 11. This is also known as Timurin. So let's go ahead and copy the definition for the Adoptium repo here. And let's just paste it in and it's there. Let's go ahead and verify that it's really there. So we'll cat out etsem repos. And here is the definition for Adoptium, which will have the Timurin distribution. Let's go and clear this. Next up, let's run a DNF update. We can see here that Adoptium is now added in. Nothing else to do. Finally, let's go ahead and install Timurin 11 JDK. Okay, let's verify that it's actually installed. So we'll say java-version. We can see here we have OpenJDK version 11.0.15. Next up, let's go ahead and install Jenkins. We'll go over to Jenkins.io. We've clicked on the download button. Let's go ahead and scroll down and we're gonna be using the stable. So we'll scroll down until we get to CentOS Fedora Red Hat. Since Alma Linux is based on the Fedora family, this is what we're gonna be using. Also, since we're logged in as root, we don't need the sudos. So let's go ahead and do wget and the Jenkins repo. We'll paste this in. Actually, let's do a clear. We'll paste that in. And you'll notice that wget isn't installed. wget is not installed by default on Alma Linux. So let's go ahead and do that. And the command is dnf install y wget. That will take just a moment. And now it's complete. All right, let's go ahead and wget our repo in. The repo's ready to go. Let's go back to the command here. We need to import our key. So we'll copy that. So the key is ready to go. Now, what it says here in this next step was to install font config in Java 11 OpenJDK. Well, we've already installed our version of Java, so we're good with that. So all we need to do now is install Jenkins. So let's go back over to our command prompt, dnf install Jenkins. And is this ready? Yes. And just like that, Jenkins is installed. Let's go ahead and check to see if it's running. So we'll say aux ww. And you'll notice here that Jenkins is not running. If we were to double check it here, we can say grep Java because Java runs it. Let's go ahead and double check it through systemctl dash dash full status and Jenkins. And we can see that it's marked as dead. And this is actually pretty good because there are some parameters that we want to go ahead and change in our startup settings. So let's go ahead and go do that. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to say system CTL edit Jenkins. And the settings that we're going to set, I'm going to grab my example here. Within the service block, because we're using system CTL to make these changes and run the commands, we're going to set up a Java ops environment variable and it has headless true. We're going to prefer IPv4 stack. We're going to set up a tempter and then we're setting time zones. We're also going to be setting a plugin root location under a var cache Jenkins. So let's go ahead and escape from that and save it. Now that temp dir that we were defining doesn't exist. And since it doesn't exist and Jenkins doesn't know about it other than me just telling it about it, that's a directory that we have to create. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a make dir. And then I'm also going to go ahead and change the ownership of that directory to the Jenkins user and group because once Jenkins starts up, it's going to be running as the Jenkins user. Let's go ahead and check our status again. And you're going to notice here a little bit of difference than when we ran it before. Now that we've defined our overrides for the system CTL process, we now see this drop in that references override conf. So when we did a system CTL edit Jenkins, it created, once it was all said and done, an override.conf with the values that we put in. We can also see these in a different way. If we say system CTL show Jenkins, if we were to scroll down through this, what we're going to see is all the different variables that are available to systemctl. And you can see here, we have this environment variable line that has Jenkins home, Jenkins web root. It says unprintable, but if we scroll right a little bit more, we saw Jenkins port and Jenkins ops. Well, you notice with Jenkins ops, 
There's the definition for plugin root. Somewhere in that unprintable, it's just not rendering out, are the variables that we set. And just to make sure that everything is going to work as expected, let's do one more thing. Let's do a system D, actually let's do clear. Let's do system D, analyze, verify Jenkins.service. Since there was no response from calling system D analyze, we can be confident in knowing that system D understands the configuration that it has to work with, and we expect the process to start. So let's go ahead and start the process. And this will take a few moments. Now that it's started, let's do systemctl dash dash full status Jenkins. So now we can see that we have active running. We see our override conf here. And then we see within this line where we're running user bin Java, if we're to scroll right, we're going to see, I went a little too far. We see our headless. We see our IPv4 stack. We see our tempter. We see our two different time zones that we've set. We see the war file. And if we go all the way to the end, we see the reference to plugin root. So the process has now started with the configuration that we wanted. If we quit out of this, we can also take a look at the log by typing journal ctl u Jenkins. And here, if we scroll right, we can see all of the output from the startup process. And you can see here from the log, Jenkins is fully up and running. Well, let's verify that. Since this is a new, fresh installation, not everything's installed yet, but what we do receive is the unlock screen. And from here, we would go ahead, put in the secret, and finish setting up your Jenkins controller. So the way that we do that, let's go ahead and copy this line. We'll go back over into our shell here. Let's go ahead and cat out that file. We'll get a value. Let's copy that value, drop it in administrator password, click on continue. We're given the option to select plugins or install suggested plugins. I always recommend install suggested plugins. And this process will take a few moments. So let's fast forward through it. Now that the plugins are installed, let's create our first admin user. So admin, admin, use something stronger than admin for your password, full name, and let's put in an email address. We'll click on save and continue. We'll keep the default URL that's here because that's the name of my instance. We'll click on save and finish and click on start using Jenkins. And from here, you can see that the Jenkins controller is up and running. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.